Hi there, and welcome to AP Human Geography with Professor Dustin. In this video, we're talking about the Urban Realms Model. We've been talking about urban models. First, we looked at the concentric zone model and then the Hoyt sector model. And finally, we discussed the multiple nuclei model, which brings us to the urban realms, posited first by James Vance in 1964. Now, as we looked at some of these earlier videos, we had some things going on that were changing the way cities had traditionally developed. Probably the biggest factor was the invention of the automobile, which had really taken off by the mid-1900s. James Vance began to notice that cities no longer operated as the central hubs that they did in the same way leading up to the middle of the century. But they actually started to operate more like these self-sufficient realms that existed around the old CBD. The focus and significance of the historic central business district started to decline. And James Vance was attempting to explain with the model the way that cities would structure themselves and organize over time moving forward. And his model was based on the fact that urban expansion occurred around structures such as shopping malls that tended to be located near or outside of the central business district. In fact, because cars made traveling so easy, land located away from the hustle and the bustle of the central downtown area actually started to become in high demand and due to the nature of bid rent, which means essentially that the closer you are to the central business district, the land is going to be more expensive and the further away, conversely, it's going to be less expensive. Houses and yards further from the CBD could be bigger and isolated from the craziness of inner city business. Now, this bolstered the growth of the suburbs, which kind of became goals for most new families. These smaller city regions emerged and soon became realms that operated like independent cities decked out with office buildings, hotels, and even entertainment. These realms became known as edge cities and operated essentially as cities themselves. The model provides us with a way of looking at metropolitan regions based on how people organize themselves and adapted to the widespread use of automobiles. There are no shortage of examples of edge cities. Since Charlotte happens to be pretty close to where I live in South Carolina, we'll use that as an example. Charlotte's uptown region represents the traditional downtown. This is where you'll see skyscrapers and lots of office buildings. If you look at some of the regions in this map, you'll see areas like South Park and Myers Park. These regions are edge cities around Charlotte. These areas have what resembles a CBD apart from the main city itself. Like with all models, we really need to ask ourselves, why is this important and why do we need to know this stuff? Well, as it turns out, Vance wasn't totally wrong when he discussed how the CBD as the focal point of cities was in decline. All the way through the 1990s, the American dream kind of centered on this suburban life. There was much emphasis on purchasing cars and living in areas that was close to shopping districts and entertainment, nice schools, and all that jazz. But recently in the early 2000s, many cities began revitalization efforts in order to bring people back to the CBD. Again, looking at Charlotte as an example, you start to see young singles and couples and young families and even some retired elderly people moving back into the downtown area. Edge cities also became a destination hotspot during this time as we approached 2020. By focusing on walkable cityscapes and accessible housing and entertainment, many downtown areas once again have begun to grow, albeit with a little less emphasis on work and more emphasis on socialization and entertainment in the form of museums, parks, festivals, and other things that bring people together. The thing with models is that they're not always 100% accurate. All you have to do to consider the holes in this one is think about how people organized themselves during the remote work period that accompanied the COVID-19 pandemic. Even now, in 2022, we're still not sure exactly how the work landscape is going to be organized over time. A lot of people moved during this time to more rural areas to get away from the city center during covering 19 pandemic. And many people quit their jobs during the Great Resignation and decided to work from home in a remote location, driving in when needed, but primarily attending meetings via Zoom and using computers, tablets, phones and all that that enabled them to do their work from their home offices. 
Who knows? Someone right now could be thinking about a new model to explain the future of the American city in the age of remote work. It's possible. I hope that this video was helpful. If it was, please like, subscribe, especially share with your friends so that they can find it helpful too. And I'll see you guys on the other side of the monitor in the next video. Oh, <laughs>